Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me for yet another video on how to trade the stock market and options trading. Welcome back to all of our subscribers. And if this is your first time here, my name is Kirk with Tactical Options Trading and we make videos just like this on a consistent basis where we talk about the stock market and options trading. If you'd like to learn more, consider subscribing and clicking that bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. All right, guys, we're talking today about Fibonacci retracements and extensions. How cool this is. This is a really cool concept and I wanted to get right into it, you guys. So Leonardo Fibonacci. Fibonacci was an Italian mathematician from the Republic of Pisa, considered to be the most talented Western mathematician of the Middle Age. Well, Leonardo came up with this sequence and he called it the Fibonacci sequence. And the Fibonacci sequence is a set of numbers basically that starts with a one or a zero, followed by a one, and proceeds based on the rule that each number, called a Fibonacci number, is equal to the sum of the preceding two numbers. That kind of sounds a little bit complicated, right? It's really not that complicated. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So here's the Fibonacci sequence, if you've ever wondered what the Fibonacci sequence is. So if you have a zero, and then a one is added to it, and you add the zero and the one together, what's that gonna end up being? Well, that's gonna end up being one. Now, if you had the one and the one, and you add those two together, what does that come out to? Well, that comes out to two. Now, if you had the two and the one, and you add those together, that comes out to a three. Now, if you had the three and the two, and you add those together, what does that come out to? That comes out to a five, and so on and so forth out into infinity. So this would go on and on and on out into infinity. Uh, but you know, the sequence of all this is not so important. It's rather the quotient of the adjacent numbers that possesses an amazing proportion, roughly 1.618, or its inverse of 0.618. Now, let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. So here's our Fibonacci sequence down here along the bottom. Now, there's a thing called the golden ratio. Now, a Fibonacci number divided by the previous number will produce the golden ratio of 1.618. So what do, I, what do I mean by that? So if we take the eight and we divide it by the previous number in the sequence, in this case, it would be the five. You can see the five right down here. So you take the eight and you divide it by the five, that's gonna give us a 1.618. Same thing if we did it with the 13 and we divide that 13 by eight, what's that gonna give us? Well, it's gonna give us that same golden ratio number, 1.618 and so forth and so on. So again, 21 divided by 13, 1.618. And the farther you go out in this series of numbers, uh, it, the closer it's gonna get to that 1.618 because you know I've rounded it down to about three digits here, but there's really a long string, a string of numbers that are right out here. But the farther we go out on this sequence, the closer it's gonna actually get right up to that 1.618. So almost everything in nature has dimensional properties that adhere to this ratio of 1.618. It's kind of crazy to think about. Uh, so. You know, the fundamental function of the building blocks of nature is this basically this Fibonacci sequence and this golden ratio of 1.618. So you guys don't believe me? Here's a crazy fact. So take honeybees, for example. Uh, if you divide the female bees by the male bees in any given hive, that will give you a 1.618. Crazy, right? I mean, it's just crazy to even think about that that could even work out in bees. So the Fibonacci sequence is in nature, it's in everything. So basically what it comes down to, and we're talking about the golden ratio, is if we take a line, for example, we take this line down here at the bottom and we divide it into two parts. Now that two parts, uh, there's, a little, there's a little formula here. So uh, if we take those two parts and we divide the longer part by the shorter part, that is going to equal the length of all of the line put together uh, divided by the longer part. And that number is going to again, again come out to 1.618 or the golden ratio number. Now, why is all this so important? Well, it's important for a couple of reasons. And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about when we're looking at stock charts. But you know, the golden ratio symbol, just thought I'd throw this in there. 
is uh, basically the 21st letter of the Greek alphabet called phi. So that's what it looks like there. So if you ever see that, now you know that's the golden ratio number. So this Fibonacci sequence can be seen all through nature, seashells, um, you know, plant life, even hurricanes. I mean, look at this, you can even see that Fibonacci, that golden ratio Fibonacci sequence right here in, in this hurricane. It's in everything, the galaxy, um, trees, we're talking pine cones, uh, shells, uh, fingers, even fingerprints, etc. It's everywhere. Even some art. Now look at this. This is what I found was pretty in incredible. Is that even a continent has that Fibonacci sequence look to it? So lots of lots of interesting things that go into this Fibonacci. So how does it all play out in trading? Well, the Fibonacci trading uh, we use it in you know the uh, in the sense of the one point six one eight. Um, and then also the inverse of that, which I'm going to show you guys how to figure that out. So the inverse of that basically is if you remember on those previous slides, what we were doing is we were taking the, uh, the higher number and dividing it by the lower number. But in this case, now we're going to take the higher number and divide it by a higher number again. So what we're looking at here is we're taking the 13 and we're dividing it by the 21. Now, if we go one place out, that's going to give us the 0.618. Now, if we go two places out, so we're taking now the 13 and we're dividing it two places out by the 34, that's going to give us a 0.382, which is basically a square root of this number here. Uh, so now if we do that again and we take the 13 and divide it by the 55, it's going to give us a 0.236. Now, if we just turn all these into decimal, I mean, into, uh, into um, percentages, this is where it becomes part of our trading and how we can use it in our trading. So some common retracement levels in trading are basically the same retracement levels that I just showed you here. So we have the 23.6, the 382, the 50%. That's not really technically a Fibonacci level. It's just basically a halfway point between the prior move. And then we have the 618 and then we have a 786, which is the square root of the 618%. So how does this all play out. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. I'm going to take myself off the video so I'm not uh, clouding up the screen here. So how does this play out? So let's say, for example, we're looking at retracement levels and we want to find out what that retracement level is going to be of a certain move. So now we've had a move down. You can see that we've had this move down and now we're looking for a reversal. And we're wondering how far back or how far this is going to retrace before it uh, breaks down and trades back down or if it actually is going to trade continue to trade up so this is where we use these retracement levels to give us an idea so there's our 23.6 retracement uh, 38.2 percent retracement and there's our 50 percent retracement and now here's the crazy thing so around the 618 percent and the 786 this is usually the make or break point when we're talking about retracements on stock if these stocks are actually going to continue to move higher or if they're going to break down and go lower. So usually right here in this zone between the 618 and the 786 is where we are going to decide if or the stock is going to decide if it's going to break out and continue up or it's going to break down. So usually though, a lot of times that stock is going to turn around around that 618 uh 618 percent retracement. Now, if it does break out above that 618 percent retracement, or that 786 retracement, it's a very good chance that it's going to continue and move on up to that extension now of the 1272. And I'm going to show you guys what that looks like right here. So now we're talking extension levels. In the previous slides were talking about retracement levels. Now we're talking about an extension of the prior move. So what am I talking about? So now, now let's say we're kind of in an uptrend here. We had an uptrend. It's pulled back a little bit. And now we're looking at a continued move. Now, if you remember on the previous slide, we had our, uh, our uh, 618 retracement about here. And then we had that 786 about here. Now, you remember if I said if it broke through those two, uh, those two retracement levels there, it's a good chance that it's going to go on up to that 1272 extension. And then if it breaks that 1272, it's a good chance it's going to go up to that 1618. Now, what happens a lot of time is uh, the stock will trade right up to that 1272 extension. 
and it will start to stall out. It'll, it'll just kind of fade out, maybe even fade down a little bit before it gets some steam. So this is a good time to sell some, maybe some iron, uh, you know, some iron butterflies right around this, uh, you know, the stock's kind of trading in a range or maybe even selling a uh, call credit spread, something up above the market because you know that stock's kind of stalled out there. Uh, so, you know, and then if it passes that 1272, a lot of times it's going to come up to that 1618 and stall around there and maybe even trade down. So those are, these are good numbers to know. And, you know, like I said, you know, it's not so much, uh, you know, if whether you believe in these or not, uh, is it something that people are just drawing on their chart and they're respecting these lines and the stocks respecting the lines because traders are looking at these same lines and at these same points, they're all making decisions. Either way, whether you believe that this Fibonacci plays itself out in the stock market, uh, it's good to know how to draw these on your chart because, you know, people respect these, uh, traders respect these. And if you're all looking at the same lines, you can get an idea of where that stock's going to go. So let's show, I'm going to show you guys some quick examples here of some uh, amazing uh, how this stuff actually plays out in the market here. So let's take a look at, uh, uh, <laughs> I can't even think, MasterCard. So we're looking at MasterCard right now. And let me kind of pull this over here so it's off to my left. Now you can see that MasterCard at this point had a uh, big pullback. And now we're looking for where that stock was gonna go. Now the cool thing about Fibonacci is that it's a forward projecting indicator. A lot of indicators just show you what the stock is going to do now, or it doesn't really tell you where it's going to go. Uh, but a Fibonacci uh, extension can actually tell you where that stock can be expected to go. So let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. So let me put this Fibonacci uh, extension on here. And the way I do this is I draw this from this high point down to this low point. And you can see that it automatically adds all those extensions on to our chart. And you can see here, we've got the 38.2 uh, the uh, re retracement, the 50% retracement, the 618, the 786, 1272, and 618. So check this out, you guys. So this stock had a, a pullback. And now as it comes up, it kind of stalls out around that 38.2. And then as it goes through that 38.2, we're just going to go ahead and take that off the chart. Uh, it broke through that 50%. And then it broke through that 618. And remember, as I said, if it breaks through that 786, it's a very good chance that it's gonna to go to the 1272. And if it goes to the 1272, it's most likely gonna go up to that 1618. And look what it did. So right there, it came right up around that 1618 and boom. Now the cool thing is, is uh, you know, we have these big market moves like this. You know, the last week or so, we've had some down movement in the market. But the weird thing is that it all coincides with all these Fibonacci levels that are on the charts. You know, we have uh, news that comes out. Amazingly, it's right there at that Fibonacci level. And so the market does, does a turnaround uh, right there at those levels. Kind of kind of crazy. Uh, let's take a look at NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA, um, for example, let's take a, let's draw this one here from this point down to this point. Look at that, right there at that 1272 extension. I mean, it came right almost to the penny there. Just a little bit above. Uh, but you can see that as we zoom in a little bit closer on this chart, you can see that uh, right around that 618, it was uh, it was struggling to push up through that resistance. And let me take these, uh, these resistance levels that it's already crossed through. So it came right up to that 618. It failed at that 618, traded back down. And then the next time it pulled up to that, or uh, came up to that 618, it came up there with a vengeance and pushed all the way up through that 618 and the 786. And where did this stock terminate? Let's see. Right up there at that 1272. And then again, off to the races it goes. Uh, fell all the way down from that point, right off that 1272 extension. So kind of crazy. Let's take a look at FedEx. There's some, there's some uh, pretty neat ones here on FedEx as well. Now this doesn't, you know, you don't have to use these just on uptrends. You can use these on downtrends too. So let's say we were looking to see how far this uh, stock was going to trade down. So it, it climbed up. Now it's uh, pulling back and it actually pulled back through that 38.2, the 50%. It 
It broke down through the 618. It broke down through the 786. Where did it terminate? Around that 1272. And then it actually turned around and started to head higher from that point. So whether you, whether you believe the Fibonacci's or not, I mean, people are looking at them on the chart. Uh, traders respect them. And so therefore, it's nice to know how to put these on your chart so that you know how to uh, be able to draw these out. Let me just show you one more example. Uh, let's look at Apple. Everybody knows Apple. So Apple, uh, we had a little bit of a pullback. And let's see where this goes. Wow, look at that right there, that 1272 extension. So we had a pullback and now it's retracing. It went back to the 382, uh, the 50, the 618, broke through that 786. And where did it go? Right up there to that 1272 extension. Within pennies, you can see that uh, the high of that candle was 233.47 and that extension is 233.58. So we're about 10 cents off of that extension. Uh, pretty, pretty amazing stuff. Pretty amazing stuff. Anyway, I wanted to show that to you guys. I'm gonna show you guys on, on another video how to set up the Fibonacci tool on Thinkorswim. It's pretty easy to use and uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in another video. I'll link that right up here at the top. When you watch this video, you can click on that link and it'll take you right over to this other video to show you how to set that up. So anyway, you guys, I hope you uh, have enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Really appreciate you guys watching our videos. If you have any ideas for videos, please comment in the section below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. If, if you think this video has been helpful, we'd love for you to subscribe or share this with a friend. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Kirk with Tactical Options Trading. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.